Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Independent Dealer Podcast brought to you by Buckeye Dealership Consultant. Today, we have JP and Chad from Martin Bryan Accounting and Consulting. And Jeff, today we talk about fractional CFOs. What's that about? Yeah, really cool concept. Cool term, cool concept. Um, this was brought to me by a dealer buddy that I really trust. They've been working with JP and Brian or Chad and JP for a long time or maybe a long time, a couple months, but he just raved about the fact that he's finally got a financial game plan in place. We all set these goals and these strategies, but we don't really keep ourselves accountable or always know everything. So in this episode, guys, we're going to talk about what fractional CFO is. We're going to talk about the pitfalls that dealers fall into. We're going to talk about some great tips that these guys have for us. So they share some awesome knowledge that as independent dealers, the things we need to be looking out for and of course, how, how a firm like theirs could, could step in and help us out. Guys, say hello to the independent dealer community. Hey guys. Hello. All right, here, here we, we go. go. That work. Cool. <laughs> Welcome to the Independent Dealer Podcast with hosts Luke Godwin and Jeff Watson, a podcast by dealers for dealers. Here we go. I am a CPA and uh, I have spent eight years uh, in dealerships of large buy here, pay here, and lease here, pay here dealerships uh, over the years. And uh, one was an 8,500 buy here, pay here account, and the other one was a 6,000 uh, buy here, pay here, and lease here, pay here dealership. So acting as their controller and as their CFO uh, at those dealerships. And then uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I, I branched off and started a, a, a CPA firm a consulting firm uh, that deals strictly with the uh, the auto industry and, and this space. Uh, and then about six months ago, I brought uh, JP on and we, and we formed a partnership to to carry that on. And so Chad, were you, uh, so how long were you in the, the buy here, pay here space? You said about 15 years? Well, I, I've been in the in the corporate world for, for 15 years. I spent five years in uh, audit and tax work and then went into the corporate world, but spent eight years of that specifically as a controller or CFO of, of the large buy here, pay here, lease here, pay here uh, dealerships. Okay, so you have a good a good grasp of what all of us go through daily, it sounds like. So it's a good mix of, of having that industry audit tax work mixed with boots on the ground dealership work kind of gives me a, a good perspective of what dealers and their, and their financing you know, piece or their uh, finance department is going through on a daily basis. Sure. And JP, where, what are you doing here? Yeah, <laughs> good question. Um, so, you know, like Chad, I, I have this, uh, the audit uh, tax kind of consulting and accounting background. I spent the, the better part of uh, almost 13 years at a large CPA firm that, that serves this, uh, this space, Cat Sapper Miller. And, uh, you know, during that time, probably spent 50% of my time in the independent automotive space. So, I didn't have, you know, boots on the ground like Chad did, but um, dealt with uh, dealers, you know, just about daily and kind of their, uh, any issues they're facing. And I, and I got to know Chad over the last couple of years, kind of serving mutual dealers that he was an outsourced CFO to, and that I was kind of an audit auditor and accounting consultant to. So um, I'm, I'm now in the past year getting a real flavor for what you guys go through on, on the day-to-day -day basis. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So we're going to talk about this term called fractional CFO. Guys, tell us, what are the challenges? I mean, you talk to a lot of dealerships, you've been in dealerships. What are the challenges the dealerships face from a financial situation where they would need a fractional CFO or where they would need someone like that? What, what are we dealing with? What are the headaches that we're running into? What are the blind spots that we have that, that we're not really addressing as, as independent dealers? Yeah, I'll take that one out of the gate. Uh, man, it can look like a lot of different things to a lot of different dealers. But, you know, through the course of this uh, discussion, we, we can pick up some of the pain points uh, that we're hearing and that, that generally draw us in. Uh, you know, uh, some that, that immediately come to mind. Uh, you've got, I mean, staffing's a huge issue these days, right? Uh, and, and dealers uh, get in touch with us because they're having someone, some key accounting member uh, retire or leave, um, or just walk out. Right. And so you, you're, you're thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So an outsourced CFO or outsourced controller might come in kind of as a stopgap just to make sure that that, 
uh, quintessential daily, weekly, or monthly, you know, processes aren't, aren't slipping through the cracks, you know, things like uh, supervising existing accounting folks, right? Making sure the um, policies and controls are being followed, um, uh, producing, you know, monthly financial reporting, um, make sure cash flows are being managed, right? That vendors are being paid, people are being paid. And so, you know, folks like us might come in to, to be that stop, stop gap and then over time develop with the company. That, that's a scenario that we hear a lot. Um, another one that, that we come into quite often is, um, is, is a company is growing and also decides it needs to grow up financially. And so at some point in the kind of growth cycle of a dealer, um, checking your bank balance once or twice a week isn't sound financial planning or isn't nailing the fi finance role. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, having someone, an outsourced CFO come in uh, or, you know, if you can afford a full-time CFO on staff, you know, to make sure that uh, monthly financial statements are being produced, that, you know, you can put budgets and projections in place to see what the course of the business is, analytical packages, if you don't have um, maybe the right DMS in place uh, or the right access to sales and collections uh, data. And, 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 you know, what, what an expert can do, a finance expert can do is, is gather all the information, digest it, and, and meet with owners and managers and, and see what's working, what's not, what's the health of the business. Yeah, JP, it makes me think, I mean, there's so many areas that I, I would love to ask you guys a million and a half questions right now. So I'm going to try to control my thoughts, but when do we this, need to go? When, when do independent dealers, Luke's laughing, when do independent dealers, when do we graduate from like, hey, I, I'm the dealer and I'm the one checking the bank accounts and I'm like willy nilly running my stuff half off QuickBooks, half off my DMS. And like, if the money's in the account, I'll buy a car. If it's not in the account, I won't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm at some weird phase right now where I know enough to screw up my QuickBooks, but I don't know enough to get it right. And I've had this conversation with Luke many, many times. And apparently the CPAs I'm using right now know enough to get it wrong as well and not actually get it right. I don't Jeff's, know. Jeff's main question is, can you I'm do his 20, 20 group numbers? <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway. But at what point does a dealer like me graduate and say, hey, what I need is I need an outsourced controller or an outsourced CFO or, hey, actually, I'm at the point now where I've got to actually hire someone and, and these and someone like you guys could train them to make sure that the policies are because I just don't know what I don't know. I, I don't know these reconciliations and bank statements and and putting all this stuff together. Like at what point does a dealer graduate? Well, I think that's interesting because we're, we're working right now with a, a group that is, you know, uh, that does financing and they're actually trying to get a program in place that even for their startups and their new newbies uh, that are coming on with them, that they're putting some kind of fractional CFO uh, relationship in place, even from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and because it's fractional, because it's not a full-time role, uh, you have the ability to scale the, the pricing and the needs with what, where that dealer's at in their cycle. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you guys know cars. I, I hope you do. Most, most independent dealers know cars. We don't know cars. We know numbers. And I, and I always try to, you know, kind of put that into perspective and, and not that you don't know numbers, but there's a point where you get to that, um, that, that growth and those milestones that, it's out of your wheelhouse and you're better served being on the front lines of the dealership, buying inventory and, and managing the operations and allowing somebody else then to come alongside and manage the numbers and the banking relationships and, and give you a roadmap. Uh, I think that's, that's the big piece Chad. here is you don't know what you don't know. And most, most dealers that I've talked to are back of the napkin. You yeah, know, we can get it out on the whiteboard and it, it may or may not, you know, tie and we did, we may have multiplied or added wrong. Uh, but we're, we're able to provide a roadmap that says, this is where you're at. Uh, this is the uh, milestones. As long as you can achieve these, you should be able to, to achieve your goal of X. Can I, st can I stop you? That, yeah. Can I stop you for one second? Because um, it seems like as dealers, we... It's kind of the, the car jockey portion is trying to be beat out of us 
<laughs> um, and, and that's the reason we're going to trainings and that's the reason we're doing all these things. And, you know, kind of what I, what I hear you saying is, well, actually you need to be a car jockey. Um, let me handle everything else. Is that a good thing? I, I don't know, because we've always been said that's, we should, we should be running our business, not being in the business. But, but allow, allow a, a person who is, you know, an expert uh, in the finances provide you a, a daily snapshot, a weekly snapshot, that those monthly analytics that are key to your business to allow you on, on a whim to, as you're at the auctions, you can pick up your phone, look at that snapshot, see where the business is at, what all the key metrics are, you know, whatever you're used to looking at. And then put it down and get back to the to the business that you're you're good at, at doing. And okay. again, I'm not trying to say that dealers aren't good at the business and the number side, uh, but they're usually the ones that are best at the operations, buying inventory yeah. and managing those processes. It's a okay. similar argument, Luke, I think I have with my 20 group numbers is I don't want to spend three hours trying to get my numbers together. I want to spend three hours analyzing the numbers and coming up with a game plan. Yeah. So yeah, if I can't have a comptroller or a CFO on full-time payroll, y- you do need someone that knows how to reconcile bank statements, that knows cash flow statements, that knows, and, and you mentioned a big thing is projections. You know, I mean, we all know uh, Luke needs a $50 million free and clear portfolio to retire. That's his goal. So how is he going to get there? You know, we all right. say that and it's like, well, hey, PS, you know, selling 20 cars a month is not going to get you there. But selling 80 cars a month is going to get you there, but it's also going to get you broke. So, you <laughs> yeah. know, someone like you guys would come in and say, well, here's the roadmap to get there. You're going to be able to grow organically this way, but then you're going to have to borrow to get to the rest of the direction. Is that, is that what we're talking about where it kind of goes above and beyond accounting and it goes more into consulting and kind of, you know, game planning? Yeah, and I, and I think... I, I think the goal would be on, on a true fractional CFO uh, role would be that you've got a boots on the ground, you know, somebody in your office that's doing the daily, you know, paper transactions and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, a, a fractional CFO can help oversee that individual, make, mm-hmm. you know, take the pressure off of you. I've seen a lot of dealers just get burnout, right? Doing all aspects of the business. Yeah, and I and I think the the business side of it, the accounting side, is the, is an area uh, that is as a big pain point, stress point. You know, is the money there to, to make payroll? Is the money there to buy the cars? How many cars can I even buy this week? And without having to dip into reserves or or you know another uh, lending institution. Um, yeah. So so I think that's where it's really a quality of life for the dealer. You know, letting them enjoy what they do enjoy. And that's usually the, the operations in the car side and, and taking that pain point off to make this a lasting business for them. And it, it makes me think of something else too, is there's, you know, we all have people in our dealership that do some of the numbers for us, whether that's, you know, daily balances or reconciliations or even ordering parts and booking deals and things like that. Like to have someone who's an outsider, look at your processes and say, Hey, guess what? This is not getting to the bank. Or did you know this person has the ability to unbook accounts or reverse payments or delete and delete, undelete things? There's a problem here. So, so even from a safety standpoint, I could see the benefit of someone knowing more than me to know exactly what to look for when it comes to maybe a fraud or embezzlement or, or any kind of sketchiness. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast real quick. Uh, Buckeye Dealership Consulting, you know, they're a sponsor of the podcast and a great financial tool and consultant. So as we talk about consulting and, and being able to keep your dealership going in the right direction, these are guys that are not only helping you with your reinsurance products, but they're also helping you with uh, consulting and education these days. Yeah. And also today we talked about some tax strategy uh, and, and you know how that works into the dealership community. And uh, for sure, I think pretty sure that reinsurance is the number one best tax strategy when it comes to uh, or in a car dealership. So yeah, well, sure. Building, you can, tax you can try to write down your inventory, but you're going to have to write it back up when you sell it for more. And, or you could try to cost seg your building. Yeah. yeah but putting in a reinsurance company is, uh, it's immediate and as long lasting. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys, back to the episode. Can I, can I kind of talk through the layers of this real quick? It just at my store, because I, I kind of want to know where you would fit. Um, I think you'd fit where I fit right now. 
I think. Um, so I have a comptroller that handles writing checks, uh, bank balances, uh, preparing a daily uh, control sheet for me, um, inputting uh, payments into QuickBooks, um, you know, pretty much all that type of stuff. So then I go back and I check undeposited funds accounts, uh, clearing accounts, uh, and I do kind of the reconciliation all through there. Um, and then I send things to the CPA. What I understand, is, and I think, Chad, what you're saying is you would essentially eliminate me from that process, probably train my comptroller a little better, and then bridge to the CPA. Is that is that what y'all do? So when you say when you say uh, you you give the numbers to the CPA, is that at year end, or are they doing something for you monthly? T typically at year end, because I've worked alongside my CPA company for ten plus years now, and I was trained by one of the best I think in the industry when it when it came to it. Yep. So so I knew how to re reconcile everything. He taught me that, um, and so I can essentially at the end of the year, unless I have a problem, say here you go, and it's done. Um, because I've done all the reconciliation up to that point. Is that what y'all would come in and take off of my plate? Yeah, we could we could come in and, and take the reconciliation, the oversight, uh, kind of take you out of that and, and be able to give you a finished product to look at. And you're not doing the hands on, you know, manipulate. And a lot of what you just said, you know, your your comptroller could probably also do with the, with if the I right trained her. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then making sure that the, the right controls and processes were in place. The one thing that you did say was, you know, having an outsider come in it is also a positive thing from a collusion standpoint. And, you know, we, we don't we're not mm. there being buddy buddy with your accounting staff. And all of a sudden now we, we, we you know, get a plan together to steal from you. Uh, you know, we're there working for you. We don't we don't know Susie in your office as well. And, you know, it's having that outside perspective to look for the for the holes and, and where money might be going that it shouldn't be uh, does does uh, work really well. I think that's huge because we don't need, I don't even know some of the processes. Again, I'm not an accountant. <laughs> I don't have an accounting degree. And Luke says some of these things to me sometimes where it's like, oh, man, that's that's you do that every every week, every month. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I just, uh, you know, we stick the receipts in a box and then the, that box gets mm -hmm. stuck in the closet somewhere. <laughs> um, so uh, some of the, those processes, I think dealers just don't even know they're supposed to be doing them. Like, we just don't even know we're supposed to be reconciling, you know, credit card statements or receipts or any of these this crazy stuff. So having someone that knows like, hey, man, your your cash accounting process is completely broken like this, this is fraught with the ability of people to steal from you because you just haven't, you don't have your thumb on it. Right. And like, you know, most, most of us are going to have a pretty small accounting back office. Right. And so one person, it, it's tough to spread duties that might conflict with one another if you've got two people in the back office. Right. And so that's where someone like an outsource accounting function can come in to, to not only see how those duties that might conflict with one another are spread, but also add in a layer to monitor them. And, and so, you know, outsource CFO or controller, you know, for that type of business that's smaller and kind of growing up in terms of their policies and procedures, um, they might come in and kind of insert themselves a little deeper uh, in the onset, right? And we're gonna roll up our sleeves. We want your policies and procedures to be in place to limit fraud opportunity and, and just to have the quintessential uh, PMPs in place that you need and help train folks. And then, you know, after that, you know, initial uh, kind of honeymoon phase is over, you, you're, you're more buttoned up and someone like an outsourced CFO can then take us a, a little step back, right? And spend a little bit less time and it's more supervisory and advisory, right? On a go forward. That's interesting that y'all set up the policies and procedure to train the staff to do it because I, I feel like I could probably train my staff to do it, but maybe not a hundred percent. Right. And, and I think that I, I could see how that could be very helpful because like you said earlier, sometimes you don't know what you don't know, but the real question, I mean, being honest, can you, can you really do 20 group numbers for Jeff? Because we got to get this done. <laughs> 
I, I can't I can't trade my staff to do anything. I'm I'm watching my lot tech blow rocks all over the parking lot right now. So <laughs> apparently, up cars, yeah. <laughs> apparently I have no idea what I'm doing and I have no ability to teach people. So guys, give us some tips. Give us some give us some actionable items right now. What what do dealers need to do if if maybe they don't know if they're at the level to call you yet, but there's things that you see are just like these blatant faux pas that we're doing as dealers. What, what do we need to kind of have on our radar and either start digging into it and learn or at least be able to see, hey, uh, this is a complete blind spot. I had no idea that I wasn't doing this or that I was supposed to be doing this and I need to figure this out. Sure. Um, you know, I think I think a couple of key areas I would look at is probably, you know, what are you doing on a monthly basis, right, to reconcile your accounts? Luke, you mentioned that you're, you're in, you know, you're doing some of that hands-on work right now, and you're looking at the numbers and you're diving into some of the detail. Uh, but, but is is somebody doing that? You know, if if you're just blatantly taking the numbers out of your uh, DMS or QuickBooks, and there's no one really reviewing, maybe not even reconciling cash, which is, uh, you know, kind of that quintessential daily activity. Uh, but if those things aren't being done, you know, daily or monthly, there, there's probably a problem, and we need to you know, to, to look, you know, at what's going on. I, I think budgeting and forecasting is key. Mm. Um, and I, and I, I can't produce a set of numbers monthly and then not have something to compare it to and feel good about that. You know, you, when I, you know, one of the first things uh, somebody as a fractional CFO controller should be doing is sitting down and, and picking the dealer's brain on, you know, how do you think your business is running? What are the key metrics that you measure your business by? And, and where do you think the business stands? And, and then lo and behold, when you go and you do a model uh, and, you, and you plug all those numbers in, nine times out of 10, you're miles off, right? A, a dealer has an inflated perception of how their business is really performing. And they're really not understanding what to measure their business against. And so having that budget or forecast to compare actuals to and look on, you know, have a, you know, a, a, a goal to get to, by, you know, in the next 12 months, I think is is essential uh, to be a successful you know business owner slash you know dealer uh, right now. Tax season is coming. Uh, I don't know about you, Luke. I've had a couple slow months. Uh, we're sitting here at the end of October. I don't think we're going to come anywhere near to hitting our goal. So I don't know what's going on out there, but I need to start getting that tax money flowing because I can't handle a slow November and December. That's right. And Tax Max will sure help you with that fourth quarter money, not just the first quarter money. So. Uh, Get signed up today, Jeff, because you can maybe get ready by November 1, hit the ground running with their fourth quarter plan and carry that momentum into tax season because, like they said a couple of weeks ago, tax season is going to be big. So don't yeah. listen to all the naysayers out there. Tax yep, season is going to be here. I'm getting my login set up this week. I'm going to start training my guys the first part of November. And then our fourth quarter programs, you know, we kind of start peddling it mid-November, but – end of November, hard through December and the 1st of January, we really push our fourth quarter program to get those tax returns pre-filed and get our hands, you know, that tax money committed to some of these deals to, uh, to, to just get myself in a better cash position. Again, I'm not rolling any deals that I wouldn't have rolled otherwise, but what I'm doing is just trying to get my hands on a little more cash because we're paying more for cars. That's right. Yeah. All right. Uh, back to the episode. Because we talk about forecasting a lot, and I think we even went through a before on a forecasting uh, podcast. And I think what, as dealers, we can do is we can forecast, hey, we plan to sell this many cars next year. Uh, we can kind of look back at our numbers and say, I think we can collect this amount per month, um, and we're going to have this many repos. We're going to have this many payoffs. We can do the, the mm -hmm. car side of that, but the problem we a lot of us are missing is the, the money side of it. How much cash is it going to take to get mm -hmm. there? And I right. think if you, you know, you and doing a realistic that, number, not this like pie yes. in the sky, we think craziness, optimistic. The craziness that we in, bring in. Yeah. And you trying to operate your business with the assumption that I can sell 80 cars a month and I'm going to go out and buy all these and just start blasting through it. You know, at some point you may sell every car that you own and you're generating that cash, but you've actually, you know, bankrupt yourself, right? Because oh, yeah. you you, you don't have the capital to support the ongoing operations until all of that money starts coming in from the sales that just occurred. So you can really kind of sell yourself out of business, if you will, quickly. Mm 
uh, if you if you don't watch it. So, um, you know that that goes the same. You know the same thing with the you know, financing piece, right? So if you are a growing dealer and you're not forward thinking and projecting out what you need to, to finance your business and that growth, you know that's probably another key area. I would say, hey, you you might want to call someone and get some help, and maybe that's your CPA you work with on a year, you know, at, at year end, or or somebody, but um, you know, one thing I, I do want to mention before I don't mention it is when it's all said and done, I really think it's key that you're finding, at, you know, when you work with a CPA or you're working with a fractional CFO, you're finding someone that knows the business. And, you know, there are nuances within the, the dealer world, you know, that are, that are, you know, specific to dealers. Uh, there's aspects of it that are the same amongst all industries and it's not rocket science, you know, but there are some dealer specific things. The things that we have seen and come across on tax returns and financials, um, you know, reporting, you know, finance contracts on a cash basis, you know, and just, you know, all these different things, right? It, it, it just seems really uh, crazy to think that a, a CPA actually signed off and, and put that, you know, put that out there. Um, so, I, so I think that's also a, another kind of red flag or, something out there to say, if, if my guy isn't, you know, a large part of their business is not the, the auto industry, you know, we probably need to, to rethink what we're doing. Um, on that note, Chad uh, and JP, whoever can, can speak to this, having y'all do what you would do as a fractional CFO and having a separate CPA firm do what they do, that probably could provide me a good bit of cover if I ever got audited, correct? Ahead, Absolutely. Right. And and the key with those, with your choosing those individuals is that they do know the, the auto industry. And if you're, you know, buy here, pay here, that they know that as well, because that's still nuanced just from the, you know, mm -hmm. new used or independent dealer space that doesn't hold notes. So um, yeah, they, they would know what, um, what hurdles to get over, what um, T's to cross, I's to dot in terms of industry specific uh nuances so yep and i the other think that sorry luke the other thing that that maybe this is going the wrong direction but you guys also it's again talking about not knowing what i don't know you guys know the people i don't know which is i think really big for a lot of small car dealers is it's <clears> like hey wh why are you using this floor plan you know they're taking advantage of you and you're like well that's the only <laughs> one that i could get and it's the only one i know and so well, I how do i get it. off that floor plan yeah 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 hey they're really killing me with this and then and then you come in hey guys wh why would you structure it this way you know you're missing out on this this and this or or you know why are you using these lenders there's so many better ones if you would just get some good financials put together and send them in you can get approved with so and so so you guys have those connections too i i imagine i think i've heard some stories about even helping some of these dealers get approved for the EIDL QPS loan or whatever that thing is. <laughs> and you can get some, you can get some really cheap money from the government right now. And people just, they don't know, or they're too intimidated to even go down that road. Yeah. And I, and I think what we're talking about right now is, is that there are so many um, company events. First of all, I agree. I think that the, the vendors who do it really well um, in the subprime space, uh, not only can serve you in their expertise, but they can connect you elsewhere, right? And so we, we've we built a, a base of connections, but um, you're, you're going to, as a business, you're going to come across company events that having an outsourced CFO or, or on the ground uh, with expertise at your fingertips is going to pay dividends, like these government loan programs that pop up out of nowhere and you kind of have to jump on it. Or, you know, hey, guess what? Car prices are up. 30%, I don't have access to a line of credit or other financing, what do I do, right? And so these days, those events, um, there's a fork in the road almost almost weekly, right? That's, uh, yeah, everything. And what, it blows out <laughs> your model too, Luke, right? So it's like, sure, we did a forecast into the first of the year, but A, things changed and now my model's blown out. And yeah. B, I'm not even paying attention to it. That's the other thing is, to have someone that can hold you accountable to be like, hey, man, you know, your goal was to have 40 cars a month to get to this point and make this much net. You're not there. Like, you know, you got to change the ship or make a real change because now you got to catch up to catch up. You know, you just pushed your model back two or three years because you're you're not staying on it. Something like that. And, and those are and those are and that's information you need. You need to know monthly. 
yeah. right? To be able to make the, the adjustments and, and uh, business adjustments that you need. If you're waiting until year end to meet with your CPA uh, to have those talks, like you said, you're years now behind, you know, if, if you did something wrong for the last 12 months. Yeah. And again, the problem I still have is my CPA is they're, they're like a number counter, you know, like they're going to tell me what I did. It's like all forensic. It's like, well, that's the past. I, I don't know <laughs> that I've had a serious conversation, maybe yeah. one or two with my CPA where they're like, Hey, you know, we need to do like some uh, inventory write down to save some taxes. And I think I brought that conversation up. <laughs> so it, I think there's a huge difference between a CPA and a consultant or a CPA and a strategist or, you know, and that's, I think, where we get really confused is, oh, I have a CPA. And it's like, well, your CPA is not giving you proactive advice. Well, to, my, to, to my old CPA was, but he's no longer with us. And, and that was and that was the big advantage when he was when he was in the right. business and alive that he was he was helping me, you know, look at my business and how to do things. And, and I don't currently have that that situation. So I think, you know, guys like this would would help Chad and or, or JP. Does it matter which CPA company I'm using as long as I guess it's a, a real car industry to have y'all in there? That does it matter who I use? No, if you're if you're going to have a fractional CFO, uh, somebody like ourselves or, or somebody else, no, we we work with you know multiple CPAs and, and firms uh, to help coordinate. I mean, <clears throat> with 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 some most of our clients, we're you know we're coordinating the tax return and the audit for the owner. You know, we're the ones having the communication. We're the ones passing off data. We're re helping review those returns before it even goes to the owner. And then, you know, the owner ultimately signs off on it, right? And we're not signing off. It's the other CPA firm is signing off. Um, but I think, I think having a fractional uh, service in-house and having that expertise also gives dealers options to be with non- dealer specific CPAs, right? For the tax yeah. and audit work sometimes, because we're helping bring some of those nuances who whoever's in there is bringing those, you know, um, additional expertise to the table and, and validating that they're taking advantage of some of those tax strategies mm -hmm. and different things. So it allows for some folks to still use their, their local CPA yeah. that they've had for years. Uh, but, but they have that, that, double check, you know, by, by somebody in house that has the expertise that can help. Sure. You me. use your, you've used your uncle for two decades because <laughs> he, he's super cheap and he does all your stuff for you and he handles every business that you have. And so yeah. you're so scared to switch over to a dealer specific accountant, but you know, a fractional CFO is, is, is that like in between to make sure that uncle Bob is actually catching all the deductions and running it. And, right. and I, I guess, yeah. and that's I, another question is, I mean, y'all do have strategies for, to look at all of our companies and make sure we're, we're attacking taxes like we should. I mean, is that, is that well, part of the I, whole strategy? I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this and JP can add, but you know, one of the uh, clients that JP is specifically involved with, in, we started out in the dealership and, and now we're getting involved in other businesses that that dealer has as well. So uh, you know, we're trying to look and be a holistic approach for the, for our clients to make sure that, Yes, yeah, something that we do on the dealership side doesn't affect the other tax strategies of other business segments they might also have. Yeah. If, if, if I can jump in, because Jeff, you brought up something really smart a handful of minutes ago. Oh, God. I'm, sure really? oh. I'm sure you're used to doing. <laughs> That's going to be um, the only clip that I pull out of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be on Facebook. Not all the negative for ones. For the next two weeks. There you go. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, Enlighten. So tax planning, right? Proactivity versus reactivity, because we hear so often from dealers that we're just getting to know like, oh, you know, and in, in, in this past April, I had to stroke a big check. I didn't see it coming. Uh, my CPAs, you know, didn't talk to me throughout the year and then just said, here's the bill, right? And so right now we're almost at November 1st. This is when you should be strategizing. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many variables out there, but do I need to yeah, you said write down inventory or take a deeper discount if I can justify it or, you know, these variety of, uh, of strategies that you can put into place now uh, because, I mean, raise your hand if you've been profitable this year. A lot of guys have um, and a lot of guys are going to be facing a tax bill. Uh, so, you know, it'll be December 31 before we know it. And then there's only so much we can do. So. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think August, September, October, November might have killed my uh, profitability. Killed, for yeah, you. <laughs> I, I, I made sure. I made sure I blew that one out. Um, <laughs> is is this a you know if you come into my dealership and I I'm not a large dealership I'd probably say bigger than most you know normal size buyer pay years in the country but not as big as some big places and I'm not a small guy. I mean, are we looking at an hourly rate? Are we looking at a job? you know, a flat fee. What, what does this fee structure look like when I, when I hire a, a fractional CEO, CFO? Yeah, I, I think every dealer we, we approach, you know, with a clean slate, right? There's not a set, this is what we have to charge for, for, for services. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I think each dealer is kind of an a la carte, right? What is it that we're doing? What are we providing? And, and then we kind of in our heads, you know, put that, put an hourly, you know, an, an amount of time to that, right? And come up with a, a, a reoccurring, you know, monthly fee uh, to, to do those services. And, uh, you know, we, we always say that, you know, if we get in and, and we're, you know, um, able to improve things and, and the dealer, you know, this is, a, this is not a, a, a lifetime commitment, right? It's a, it's a month to month, um, you know, let's, you know, let's see how it goes. But we're providing value, and that obviously wants the deal. You know, the dealer one then wants us to keep coming back for more. Sure. And usually, we're adding services than taking away. But there's times where we get in and clean things up, and the dealer just wants to be kind of a status quo or not, you know, not grow, but just wants to make sure their house is in order. And and you know, and we're able to go in, do what we do, and then pull back our fee, adjust what we do uh, to match the services that we're providing. Um, so we, we're really conscientious about making sure that the value being provided, you know, matches the fee. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Go ahead, Jackie. I'm you, sorry. Oh, right, go ahead. Fine. I was just going to say that, uh, I mean, we want to, we want to, you know, folks like us want to work with dealers of all sizes and there's yep. often a greater need at the lower level, but you know, they can't afford uh, the same bill that a much, you know, that a 3000 account dealer could. And so, you know, programs can be design based on need and as it i mean if y'all ever come in as a one-time type situation hey clean up my mess <clears throat> and train me and and i'm good to go we, we have to and and you know one of the one of the projects that i uh that we've done in the past is a, a dealer was what was trying to get financing and the, the 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 you know the bank wanted three years of audits well in their mind they had to uh, wait three years, right, and do three individual audits to get that done. But we were able to back come in, and we we retroed back and did three years retro, and 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 we were able to pull those financials together, pull the numbers together, you know, work with the CPA firm to get the audits complete. And now they had their three years of audit. So that's that was a you know a, a one off project, you know, clean up work, and then they were off to the races with their banking. This is super interesting, Jeff. Thanks for surprising me. I knew. I knew you'd love this, Luke. I knew you'd love it. I, I still have a million more questions, which is probably something I should handle off the podcast, just on a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So guys, for other dealers like me that do have more questions and want to get more educated or want to reach out to you, how, how do we get a hold of you? Um, specifically, we like the way JP and Chad talk about CFO and accounting. How, how are they going to get in contact with you? Uh, we've, we've got uh, email addresses. Uh, we, we're, we're still so new. We don't have a website yet. Uh, but uh, chad.martin at mbac-accounting.com. It's a, a long email. Uh, if I can give a phone number, it's, it's 479-685-9434. Uh, so that, that's another easy way. Uh, we're an open book. We get we get calls from from dealers all the time, just wanting to ask one off questions. Uh, sometimes that can get a little drawn out, you know, one question after another for for three weeks straight. Uh, but we're happy to do that. I mean, uh, dealers just don't know what they don't know, and to to call a CPA and be deemed, you know, three hundred bucks for an hour's worth of time to try to get an answer that may or may not be right. Uh, I, I don't I don't like that, and and so you know we we actually have four. Uh, CPAs within our group uh, that are that are working. So it's not just a, a one-off. It's not a single guy, single point of failure. So there's four of us. So somebody can usually get be you know be gotten a hold of and, and ask those questions. And and can I ask one more? Do you guys have specific um, 
uh, vendor or service software type knowledge? Do, do you do you specialize obviously in QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online? I imagine as any accountant, you've got to be an expert in that uh, software. What, what about DMSs? Is there a specific DMSs that you guys are more familiar with than others? Wayne Reeves, D- IDMS, Dealer Socket, these ones. Like, which ones do you guys would you say are kind of your bread and butter? Um, we have probably more experience in the uh, kind of the AMS, uh, the deal packs, the AFS dealers. Um, who, who am I missing, JP? We've done some IDMS. Yeah, um, you're hitting the main ones that uh, we do. Dealer with. click, uh, you know, so those are, you know, just some of the ones that we've, but, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, uh, both our experience, you know, in, in the accounting industry and being out there, Every dealer, you know, every client we would walk into, whether it was manufacturing or whatever, had a different software company, you know, a software package. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're we're pretty versed in getting in and understanding and and getting through the software to, to understand how it works, pull information, and start rolling with it pretty quick. So that's just that just comes with the territory. Very good. Um, I'll point to one other way to kind of get in touch and to get more resources. We, we run a Facebook group as others do. It's called buy here, pay here and lease here, pay here, uh, the, the forum and resource center. And, and I'm jp.brian at mbac-accounting.com. Just want to throw that out there before we, before we, uh, get sidetracked. Yeah. Plug that Facebook group one more time. Yep. Uh, BHPH and LHPH the Forum and Resource Center. All right. You guys like long names, huh? Yeah. That's <laughs> it. We're not marketers. We're not it's salesmen. The, it's the Jeff and Luke <laughs> dash independent dealer podcast <laughs> for retail and buy here, pay here dealers. I like that. Long enough. Let's change, let's change our name. Jeff. MD Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this has been great. So much awesome information. Um, I could just, uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity here for good, knowledgeable vendors to come in and help the industry. I think so much dealers look at like SaaS products as like the end all be all. Well, if I had this new software, if I had this new thing, and if I had this but really it comes down to like policies and procedures and financial literacy. And, and just, and just, I think you would, you would probably save more and, and get, you'd get further as a dealership, having a good game plan and a CFO than you would having some brand new CRM or some brand new, uh, you know, Facebook review platform that you're going to get uh, Google listings on. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. this is just like the bread and butter. And the, it's like the fundamental rock of our dealerships is like, are you financially healthy? And do you have a financial game plan? And I think it's so confusing and scary that we just ignore it. Yep. You know, maybe that's just my vibe, but that's, no, that's you're a- right. Uh, I might take that segment and put on it on a future website that we uh, we finally build, but that's a great way to sum it up. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so glad you joined us. Please take a minute to leave us a review and share this podcast with a friend. The Independent Dealer Podcast. Dealers helping dealers.